Hey, 132 folks. Um, there were a couple of things. I, I was looking at the videos that are already posted. I was looking at, at the study guide along the way, and I had a couple of things I wanted to add to that. Um, when I was talking about the Civil War in Chapter 15, uh, talking about Reconstruction, actually, pardon me, um, I, I didn't really mention much about the Freedmen Constru uh, Freedmen's Conventions, about the uh, Equal Rights Associations, um, and about to push to really empower the freed slaves, to empower the, you know, the the black vote, because that was a huge part of what was going on. That's where the union leagues come in. That's where the education comes in. That's where the Freedmen Association comes in. It is the idea to you know enfranchise and empower um, these newly uh, freed you know slaves, these new citizens. Um, but there's also a huge movement to kind of disenfranchise them, which is where the Ku Klux Klan comes in at, where um, the Black Codes come in at, where um, you, you start to see some uh, pushback about what's going on. And of course, you, you get the Enforcement Acts, you get the Ku Klux Klan Acts, um, you, you get the pushback with government uh, against those. But um, honestly, they, they, a federal government can only be so effective within the states, especially when they're working under a hostile atmosphere. Um, that's a huge part of the push back and forth of, of what's going on before we get to, you know, the redeemed South. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention was um, looking at, at Grant. Um, you know, don't, don't get me wrong, Grant is a really good commander, and he's a nice man, but he is a bit overmatched when it comes to politics. He's going to be reliant on uh, the people that he knows, or better yet, he's going to be reliant on the people in the party, because what we're looking at is machine politics. And this is, is um, a furtherance of the idea that, yes, the, the people do indeed vote, the people do indeed decide who gets to be, but um, honestly, there, there's going to be a group that controls the people. Think now real quick about your politics and what you know. What do you honestly know about your party? Well, you know what the party tells you to know. It tells you what to think. It, it reaches out and it has an agenda. And what will happen is we start to see the further organization of parties first on a local level and then on a regional level and on a state level and build up from there. So it, it's going to be these parties that do the electing rather than the people. Well, the problem is, is we're also developing what we call the patronage system or the spoil system. Whoever wins um, the election it is going to be in charge of taking care of the people that voted for them. Um, there are thousands of government jobs and there are thousands of positions to fill. And so the problem that Grant is going to run into is he's a commander. He's used to people following his commands. He's used to uh, relying on the chain of command. And so when he gets into office, he's going to be reliant on uh, this chain of people that helped to get him elected and who they know. And the problem is there, there's a lot of unscrupulous people um, that are going to put people in positions that are only going to be there um, for money, for a personal reward, for a personal value. And so unfortunately, his time as president, his uh, group of people, you're going to have a lot of corruption. It's going to be rampant at that particular point. Because this is happening, we're also going to start looking um, at the money problems that I mentioned. Uh, the book talks about greenbacks. It talks about hard money. It talks about soft money. It talks about uh, public credit. It talks about the Panic of 1873. What's going to happen is during the actual war, um, the North is going to print money. Before this, money is about specie. Money is about um, gold or silver. Gold and silver, um, as a coin, have value. Um, paper money, you know, ha has very little actual value. And so it's dependent upon the government and what is happening with it to add value to it. And there's a lot of people post-war who don't want to deal with printed money. They want that, that pocket, that, that guarantee of value. And so we're going to run into some issues. And part of that is going to be passing a public credit act that says that certain bills have to be paid in gold or silver. And that's going to cause a panic. And it's really going to blow up um, the whole idea of the economy. The other thing that text talks about is the civil service reforms. Uh, people are going to figure out that um, having a party replace certain positions in the government every four years or every eight years, um, that strategy sucks because you, you need some consistency. 
And so the civil service reforms are going to make sure that certain positions are, are not um, optional. Certain positions have to be filled by qualified people via an entrance exam, which if you know anything about the old Chinese system of um, entrance exams, um, it, it makes sure that it's a merit-based system that the people fulfilling and getting into the position actually know what they're doing and can hold it. So it, it takes it out of, of political hands. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention is um, a little bit about uh, chapter 16. Um, in the other video on 16, I, I talked about some movements going on. One thing I didn't mention much about is talking uh, about the position of women in society. And it talks about the women's movement. It talks about the cult of domesticity where women belong, you know, in society at that particular point. That, that um, they should be in the home. They should be taking care of the home. They should be taking care of the children. They should be taking care of certain things. And, and the problem is, is you're going to be looking at some wealthy women. You're going to be looking at some upper class women that are going to be unfulfilled. Um, there, there was a, an old joke that, you know, men uh, went uh, to college to get a BS and an MA uh, and uh, perhaps a PhD, and uh, the average woman went to college to get an MRS, you know, which was she went to go find a husband. And that's really not the standard, but that's, that, that's, that was the stereotype of the time period. And the thing is, is when you send people to college, fo certainly you folks are realizing it now that college changes your perspective. It changes how you see things. You become an informed and you're never the same. And these uh, folks leaving college, you know, whether they're married or not, after college, they have a different insight. They want to be able to take the information. They want to be able to contribute. And they're being locked uh, up at home. And so what we see is we see the outreach through the women's club. We see the outreach through the women's movement of trying to reach out into society and saying, oh, look, there's some inadequacies, there's some issues, there, there's some problems um, because they can see the multiple levels of society and go, OK, well, look, we should be able to help. Well, you know, some men are going to accept this. Some men are not going to accept this. Some women that, that are being forced to stay home because you, you, you're a woman, because you're frail, because you're fragile, are, are going to run into some issues. They're going to run into some illnesses. Um, I, I think it's interesting. The book talks about uh, something called neuroasthenia. And if you're a literary person, uh, you can see that pop up in the uh, yellow wallpaper. It's interesting because it's saying, look, Oh, you're just overburdened, hon. You've been taking on too many things. You've been thinking too much. You, you've been operating too much in a man's world. You need to go home and, and rest. And the cure is rest. And so we'll spend time in the country. We'll spend time in this because you're overburdened. You shouldn't be worrying about bills. You shouldn't be worrying uh, about politics. You shouldn't be worrying about manly things, right? You, you should just be gentle and, and rest. And so we're going to see this start to clash and this group of unfulfilled women, uh, women are going to become part of that progressive movement that are going to reach out and try to fix things. Um, that, that's huge and even becomes more evident as we start to push over into uh, what becomes the, the uh, struggle for unions, the struggle for working men, the, the struggle for whether it's a 40 hour week or, or against uh, child labor, a variety of things, because what they're trying to do is they're trying to uh, adjust, address the inequalities of a stratified social and financial system that is becoming all too evident in this, what, what it becomes known as the Gilded Age. And so I want you to look at that. Um, take a, um, a look too about conspicuous consumption, because I, I think that's an interesting thing is spending money in an intentionally show manner uh, with little or no benefit besides the fact that people can see you spending it and go, oh my God, look how much money they have because it buys you a position in society. So take a look at that and take a look at some of the <sighs> expansion in, in the federal government of reaching out to try to control the financial system. All right. Thank you, folks.